Hey there, Broketographers. This is Brian again for the Broketographers with another unboxing. Um, our friend Scotty at Redefine Rentals has allowed us to semi-unbox this new EOS 5D Mark IV body for you guys. Um, Redefine is a rental house out here in Southern California in Redlands. Uh, they've got plenty of cinema stuff. So if you're in the Inland Empire or LA areas, definitely check them out. They've got plenty of um, cinema-specific equipment, Ari stuff. Uh, they've got the Red Epic, they have Cook Primes, the Red Zooms, Zeiss Compact Primes, all the L lenses you could ever want, DSLRs, um, strobes, and pretty much anything you'll need for your project. So if you're looking to rent, definitely check them out at redefinerentals.com. And thank you again, Scotty, for letting us semi-unbox this for our, our followers here. So um, let's go ahead and... and open this, crack this thing open. So I call this a semi-unboxing because it looks like he got to it before us. It's missing the manuals, uh, warranty cards and everything, as well as the strap. But everything else that comes with it looks like it's in here. We got the charger, it's an LCE6. I believe it's the exact same thing as the 5D Mark III, along with some other cameras I think that use the same battery. Um, this is actually new. It's got the same form, uh, exact same dimensions and everything as the 5D Mark III's battery, which is here on the right. Uh, this is an LPE6. This is an LPE6N. They're exactly the same. I think they are backwards compatible. The only difference is that the capacity on this newer battery is slightly higher at uh, 1865 milliamp hours, whereas on the LPE6, it's at 1800 milliamp hours. So you'll get a couple more shots out of the new battery um, than you would with the older one. But I think that the older batteries will still work. Not sure, um, but they are exactly the same in form, so they should work. Let's get this out. Oh, well, we've got the CDs. Oh, and the manuals are in here. So you've got manuals uh, in multiple languages, uh, CDs here, and here is the body. Let's go ahead and set this aside. The strap is missing, um, but I am assuming it's exactly the same as other Canon straps. Now if you follow us on Instagram or read our blog, you'll notice that we did a sort of preview of this camera uh, at a Canon preview event in Costa Mesa back in late August. Um, camera's nice. It's lighter. It uh, definitely feels lighter than the 5D Mark III. I think the difference is a little more than five ounces. So it's a significant weight difference um, with a lot of new features. So let me load up a battery in here um, and we will come back and maybe do some tests. Uh, shutter sound, buffer depth, and uh, maybe just a general overview of this because we only have this thing until the morning. So um, hopefully we'll be able to get it back and run a full uh, review on it. But let me set this down and we will come back with it in just a minute. All right, guys, we're back here with the 5D Mark IV. I've put on the 35L and loaded a couple new cards as well as the new LPE6N battery. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about really quick is actually really curious to me how, and I know this is something that a lot of uh, people were a little disappointed in, is Canon's use of old standards with uh, the memory cards for this thing. So they could have done CFast, but they chose to stick with um, CF and an older UHS-1 standard for the SD card. And personally, I think that's them protecting other product lines where if they had used CFast in this camera, I think it would have been capable of uh, 4K60, just like uh, the 1DX Mark II, along with having a deeper buffer depth, um, being able to write to the card a little bit faster. So. I think it's them sort of delineating their product lines and um, 
protecting their other products the same way they're doing with the EOS still cameras and their cinema cameras in not allowing some of their cameras to do certain things and not um, having certain features like focus peaking and uh, zebras available or yeah zebra exposure check I guess available in um, their EOS still cameras where um, if you wanted those things you would have to buy into their cinema line. So I wanted to go over a couple of the quick uh, physical things in this camera. Uh, as I said, it's definitely a lot lighter than the previous one. Um, it's noticeable. It's not a, a whole lot lighter, but it is noticeable. Um, this button right here, which is actually pretty cool, it's fully customizable, which I did not know at uh, our original preview of this camera. So you can customize this ISO by default. It's um, AF area select but it is customizable to do other things, which is really cool. And I think this uh, first appeared on the 7D2, um, I think around here on the control dial or something like that. Um, other than that, uh, it's m almost, it feels exactly the same in the hand as the 5D3. All the buttons are in the same place, lock is in the same place, quick menu, start and stop. Um, the uh, remote is uh, up here in the front now, which I'm sure all the blogs and all the reviews have taken notice of. It now does also have USB 3, which is better for tethering, especially with the slightly larger 30 megapixel files. You have your mic and your headphone slot here, as well as your PC sync. On the left, on the right side, uh, cards, as I also uh, mentioned earlier. Um, but yeah, uh, if you're a current 5D Mark III user, you will feel right at home with this camera. Um, when we used it at the preview, I was able to zip around in the menus and use it just like I did the 5D Mark III. So we'll come back um, maybe with some shutter sounds, uh, shooting speeds, uh, buffer tests, and um, yeah, we'll be right back with that. All right, so we are back here with the 5D Mark IV, and we're gonna do some sort of buffer depth tests and uh, shutter speed sounds in both normal and silent mode. And here we go. Let's see how this sounds. Uh, it's showing busy. Why is it shooting so slow? Okay, so... <laughs> This is not exactly as planned, so let me come back, try to figure this out, and we'll do this again. All right, so I figured out why it was shooting so slowly. Um, this is also one of the new features borrowed from the 1DX Mark II here in the menu, lens aberration correction. So this actually corrects chromatic aberration, distortion, and vignetting. Um, in the lenses, uh, especially almost all Canon lenses are supported. And you have options here to turn on the corrections. And this digital lens optimizer is uh, actually what was causing it to shoot so slowly. Um, I'm not sure what this does aside from, uh, I guess, correct um, chromatic aberration diffraction in the lens. Um, I don't know why additional options here, as you can see, become available when you turn it off. Um, I don't know if it allows you to control individually what you want it to correct. I don't know why you would want it to not just correct everything, uh, if you can deal with the slowdown in shooting. But let's go ahead and just turn everything off and hopefully get the normal shooting speed out of this thing. So we're shooting RAW to a UDMA 7 uh, Lexar 1066X uh, compact flash card, 160 megabits a second, about as fast as you can get on CF. And let's see how this sounds. Okay, so it looks like the buffer has been hit. I don't know exactly how many shots that was. Uh, let's try this again. Okay, so the buffer clears actually pretty quickly. 
Um, I think the buffer depth on this camera is supposed to be about 21 frames in RAW. Um, now, that gets cut in half when you turn on dual pixel, which we can do from here in the menu. So we turn on dual pixel. Um, that's actually one of the newer, kind of cool, if not gimmicky features in this camera. Um, and I'm hoping they do other things with it in the future. One of the things I'm actually really hoping for is if Magic Lantern cracks this, or if Canon makes it available, if it's even possible, to sort of do what Magic Lantern did with the 5D3 and some of the other cameras in a dual ISO feature. So if this actually takes two captures from the sensor um, with the, the dual, um, the dual pixel raw, if it could actually capture um, the same image uh, with the the uh, two pixels, I guess, at different ISOs to give you a huge amount of dynamic range, which is sort of how it worked in Magic Lantern, except that it was uh, interlaced, which means your resolution is about halved once once you. Um, once you uh, get it into post. So you do get an increase in dynamic range with the dual ISO through Magic Lantern. Um, you just half your resolution because it's actually taking um, alternating lines at different ISOs. So if they can actually do this and make use of the entire sensor and not lose any resolution, that would be amazing and you would be able to have a huge amount of dynamic range with dual ISO by utilizing the dual pixel RAW. Um, so that's actually one thing, uh, I'm not sure if that'll actually happen or if it's possible, but if it is, that would be amazing and game changing for this camera. Um, so, uh, let's, so we are in dual pixel raw, which is actually, I don't know if you can see it, but it is right here to indicate that you are in dual pixel raw. Um, in dual pixel raw, your files do get twice as large because it's taking the exact same image twice um, from one capture. So everything, your file size doubles, your uh, buffer depth is halved, and um, let's shoot in dual pixel raw and see uh, what that sounds like. Uh, can I focus? Here we go. So the buffer is already filled, it's still writing to the card, and it looks like it's done. So uh, it un it unloads the buffer or it clears the, the, the buffer pretty quickly. Um, you shouldn't really have any problems uh, with fast SD and uh, CF cards um, hitting buffer uh, in this thing or actually constantly hitting buffer. Uh, the buffer depth is enough for most, I guess, sports uh, sequences as well as events. So, um, yeah, that is... That's pretty much it. Let me uh, put it up here and see if you can hear the shutter sound a little bit better. Turn this on manual focus. So that is what that sounds like. Let's, uh, let's switch it to silent mode. And silent mode has traditionally been a lot better on the 5Ds. Actually, the 5D Mark III was probably one of the quietest silent shutters uh, among any camera. Um, silent mode on the 1DX Mark II is actually still pretty loud. Um, and even though the 1DX Mark II, as well as this camera, both have the new uh, motor-driven um, mechanism for the, the mirror, um, that should actually help with silent mode. I've never heard it in this camera, but let's see what that sounds like. So that's actually really quiet. Um, if we turn this into silent uh, continuous shooting, oops, it's on the table. So that's actually still really quiet and much quieter than the 1DX Mark II, which is actually still very loud even in silent mode. And the same thing went with the 5D Mark III and the original 1DX. Um, 
So I don't know what else I can cover with this. Um, we only have this thing until the morning, so we can't do any proper image comparison tests between our 1DX Mark II, a 5D Mark III, and this thing. Um, hopefully we can get it back in our hands soon enough and do some proper tests for you guys as well as up so upload some RAWs um, so you guys can check it out if you are thinking about buying this camera. Um, overall, I would say that this camera, if you are a current 5D Mark III user, it's not necessarily worth it to upgrade just for the sake of upgrading unless you can use the new features um, like GPS, Wi-Fi. Uh, the dual pixel RAW thing is actually very gimmicky to me at this point um, until they add some functionality. Um, but if you are a current 5D Mark III user, I would say hold off as much as you can um, the video features on this thing are not particularly impressive if you are a video shooter. Um, but uh, if you have money burning a hole in your pocket, I would say it would be put to better use by buying uh, new lenses, maybe lighting equipment, or other things for your kit than to upgrade to the 5D Mark IV. Um, but if you are coming from uh, maybe a 6D or, or uh, one of the other prosumer level cameras, like an 80D, 60D, 70D, uh, 7D, 7D Mark II, and you are looking to get into full frame, um, then yeah, definitely. Uh, this camera is amazing, um, if, if not sort of incremental in its upgrades. Um, but yeah, this camera is this camera is going to be ubiquitous as the 5D Mark III was uh, when it came out, and um, it's going to be a staple on a lot of people's kit. So that is our short, maybe not so short, uh, overview of the 5D Mark IV. Um, like I said, hopefully we can get it back in our hands and get some some real tests for you guys. All right, that is it. Um, like. Follow, subscribe, follow us on Instagram at The Broke Photographers. Check us out at thebrokethographers.com and we will have more uh, lighting education, um, unboxings, reviews, overviews, comparisons. Uh, there's lots of things that we're planning to do with the site. So uh, until next time, guys.